This is music, and this is another episode of Songs from the Puke Box. Welcome to another episode of Songs from the Puke Box. It's just a what spinning series. I know it has a terrible title. It's based on an awful pun and a reference to a weird lyrical tendency within contemporary extreme metal. That's all there is to it. So in these videos, I basically, I just share with you some of the music that I've listened to over the last week or so and basically just talk about it. So uh, I have this handful of CDs to talk about this time around that I managed to listen to this week. And uh, let's just start with the first one here. Bandmaids Just Bring It. This is modern uh, hard rock. Uh, I really like this cover artwork. I have it on vinyl as well. Obviously, it's much cooler to look at on, on vinyl, but I really like this cover artwork. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're dealing with, um, melodic, uh, modern hard rock, uh, with still a bit of a punch to it. Now, this one here, uh, has a lot of, of bangers on it, a lot of groovy songs, uh, just hard rocking songs. Um, and, uh, what band may do really well, among other things, is they put together, uh, just some larger than life chorus lines that even if you don't speak Japanese, you can sing along to them. And very often in the verses too, uh, you have uh, very cool uh, melody lines that you can kind of at least hum along to. Uh, a great bass work on here uh, by Misa. Um, drumming by Akane kicks ass uh, or kicks bass drum. You know what I mean? Uh, Konami, genius as always. Uh, what I like about Konami's guitar solos is they're, they're great, but they're short, so they're not like self-indulgent. I really like that. But this is a great album. Lots of classics from uh, the Bandmade catalog on here. Starts out with Don't You Tell Me, which is just a great banger of a hard rocking song. You have uh, YOLO on here too. Uh, which, as far as I understand, was written by Kanami before she joined Bandmate, and then they reworked it a bit and made it into a Bandmate song. Uh, Take Me Higher is a great hard rocking song as well. Um, really like Time. Uh, the vocals on here are more vulnerable because, as far as I remember, it's a Miku fronted song. She's not as schooled as um, Saiki is. So Saiki's, uh, Saiki has great control over her voice and she's a great singer. Uh, Miku is a very good singer too, but her, her voice is a bit more vulnerable. Uh, sounds like that because I don't think she's as trained a singer. Um, and uh, you have Decided by Myself and uh, Secret My Lips uh, are great. So I mean, all the songs on here are good, but those are particularly outstanding songs. Uh, it is kind of weird to hear this version of Secret My Lips uh, and not the uh, band Maiko uh, self-cover version. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a great song. So many groovy riffs, so many um, catchy and melodic guitar parts and and vocal lines and you know good rhythm guitar work by Miku as well. Uh, just an all-round great uh, melodic groovy modern hard rock song there are lots of elements from kind of 90s alternative hard rock as well um and uh, just a touch of of uh, pop punk not as much on here as on their earlier albums uh there's quite a, a melancholic feel to this album as well which i quite appreciate uh but yeah if you like modern hard rock Check this one out. It's it's good stuff. Up next, we have this one here. Uh, Rune, or Rune, or whatever, by Enslaved. Uh, progressive black metal. Um, although this one is probably one of their least intense albums. Uh, you have to wait until the sixth 
track essence uh, for some, you know, black metal blast beaty stuff. And I think it's, as far as I remember, it's the only song where you have that in. Um, so it, it's not a super intense uh, album, but you have lots of, of uh, tremolo picking, uh, just not a whole lot of, of blast beating stuff. There's also a bit of an emphasis on riffs and stuff in some of the songs. You do have your screechy black metal vocals, uh, but they're sort of intertwined with uh, more like chanty kind of, of clean singing. Uh, so I, I would still consider this a black metal album. It's just not a, you know, up-tempo, intense black metal album. It's, it's progressive uh, black metal, basically black metal and progressive rock combined, and it works very well. They're really good at that uh, combination in this band. Um, and uh, one thing that was interesting is that this is also very melancholic sounding, and although although these are two completely different styles of music and what i'm going to say now is going to make both the uh enslaved fans and the bandmate fans probably want to lynch me but uh, i listened to the enslaved one right after the bandmate one and i kind of got the same kind of melancholic vibe it was very strange um Although they're completely different styles of music. I think this is a great uh, album. Some people would say it's not true black metal. I don't care. I like it. There are black metal elements on it. It's very well put together. I really like the sort of dry guitar tone. Almost kind of warm sounding in a way guitar tone. Um, so this might be a good kind of, of gateway album into black metal if you like hard rock uh, and if you like in particular progressive rock and maybe progressive metal and you're interested in getting into black metal this could be a gateway album it's it's great i like it up next uh this one here uh genesis calling all stations uh now this is a very overlooked and kind of maligned album it it flopped when it came out it's um, the one album that has Ray Wilson on vocals. And uh, I think, I think, because this one came out in well into the 90s, I think 97 or something. So uh, the old prog heads, they, they, they abandoned Genesis, probably around Duke. And then you had all the 80s pop uh, fans of Phil Collins. And obviously they're not interested in, in this one either because it doesn't have Phil Collins on it. So it flopped and they kind of gave up after this. I mean, they've had reunions and stuff, uh, but they gave up with, you know, this lineup. And it's a bit of a shame because I actually think this is a very good album. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's progressive, but it's still kind of arty in a way. Um, Ray Wilson's vocals are very different from Phil Collins's vocal and Peter Gabriel's vocals. He has more of a husky voice. Um, for the most part, this is a dark and melancholic album as well, but you do have like a lush and layered sort of keyboard and synth parts. And so there are some sneaky uh, elements from reggae every now and then and some uh, funky stuff and so on and so forth. Uh, there's even, I think that was the hit from the album, uh, Not About Us, which was almost like a 90s grunge ballad. Um, but... Uh, I think it's a very, very good kind of mellow, dark, melancholic album, and I think it's a shame they gave up after this because it would be would have been interesting to hear uh, what they would have done with this lineup. I really like uh, "Calling All Stations," the opening track and title track. "Congo" is a pretty good song too. Uh, "Alien Afternoon" is a kind of strange, unsettling song, um, but kind of mellow musically. Um, not about us. I can take it or leave it. To be honest, um, small talk is kind of a kind of a sneaky, almost strangely sad, funky kind of song. If you know what I mean. Uh, this is an album I like listening to every now and then. So there you go. Up next, uh, Iron Maiden, "A Matter of Life and Death." I have this one on vinyl too. This is the version that comes with a DVD as well with you know, the making of and different things but i only listened to the album now this is also an album that a lot of people have trash talked and very often when i feature this in my videos there's always someone who says 
that album sucks. That album is garbage. Uh, I, uh, it's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Uh, but I disagree. I love this album from beginning to end. Uh, I think maybe why a lot of people don't like this album. This is probably where the fan base realized that they're never going to get the 80s Iron Maiden back. But I mean, then again, if, if you know, if this band wants to take, if they want to take their music in a, some other direction, they have the right to do so. You can always go back and listen to the albums from the 80s whatever uh i really like this album uh it starts out with different world which is an uplifting song uh, with some great uh, vocal melodies i really like the pre-chorus uh where bruce dickinson kind of does a kind of mid range to almost low register uh singing which was kind of unusual for him as far as i remember i think he was inspired by phil Lynott, so i think that's pretty cool and then you have just uh you know, a post 2000s maiden chorus in the song. So that's a great song. Uh, Brighter than a thousand songs is uh, songs. Sons is to me a masterpiece and it's kind of a progressive song. They have an odd time signature. It's very epic sounding as well. Uh, fantastic chorus. Uh, you can scream along to it. Um, the longest day is a pretty good song as well. Um, Out of the Shadows is another kind of epic, kind of a power ballad in a way, but, you know, in, in the post-2000s Maiden style. Uh, a lot of people have trash-talked the reincarnation of Benjamin Breek, but I, I like that song. It's a great song, in my opinion. For the Greater Good of God is another great epic uh, song. And uh, Lord of Light is, is great as well. So, so I like this album. Um, it's, I like the guitar tone. I like the organic sound of it. Um, and I like Bruce Dickinson's performance. I love the cover artwork too, but a lot of people dislike this and, and you know, that's, you have the right to dislike it, but I have the right to like it as well. And I saw them when they toured this uh, album and they played it from beginning to end. And a lot of, of the, uh, uh, audience, they, they were so pissed off at that. And I just loved it. Okay, up last, you got a twofer, Suffocation, Death Metal, uh, Effigy of the Forgotten, and Pierced from Within. So two absolute classics in the world of Death Metal. And I really liked these um, twofers, uh, so I picked up a lot of those back in the day when they came out. So... Uh, you have Effigy of the Forgotten. That's a fantastic album. Uh, that's a death metal masterpiece right there, in my opinion. Uh, brutal death metal, uh, but without being, in my opinion, kind of silly and dumb, which brutal death metal ended up being, in my opinion, again, in the 2000s and 2010s. Uh, you have these uh, just insanely guttural vocals and not burpy but still guttural vocals by frank mullen but no piggy wiggy stuff right so uh, uh, and you have just fantastic awesome riffs uh, on uh, effigy of the forgotten it starts out with liege of inveracity and it just starts out doo, 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 and then just kicks into uh, you know death metal insanity uh you have uh infecting the crypts on here which is probably uh, in the top two of my favorite suffocation songs and definitely in the top 50 of my favorite death metal songs in general you have uh, mass obliteration that is probably my favorite suffocation song because i love how in the kind of main riff that they combine hardcore and death metal in the same riff that's that's a feat but it works uh and of course you have Jesus Wept, that's another classic. Uh, so, great album. Pierced From Within is another great album. It, it's not quite up there, in my opinion, with Effigy of the Forgotten, but I know a lot of people hold Pierced From Within up as their uh, favorite um, album and kind of the pinnacle of uh, suffocation. Uh, it's quite uh, similar in style uh, and, you know, great... Uh, uh, it, it, it's brutal death metal, but it's very technical too, and uh, you got you have the kind of 
prototype of the type of riff that became typical of slamming death metal uh, and it became kind of water it watered down in slamming death metal but here on these albums that's the pinnacle the epitome of awesome uh, brutal death metal riffage you have pinch harmonics you actually have lots of the things that would later become kind of disliked uh, among the death metal crowd because they became overused in slamming death metal and in deathcore a lot of that stuff is actually on these albums and it works very well here i also love how these two albums have the uh, the, the Morris sound, uh, buzz, uh, fuzz, I would say fuzzy guitar tone, uh, kind of punches you in the face. Uh, so two fantastic, brutal death metal classics uh, by Suffocation. Uh, and even two, uh, a two for here, two in one, two death metal classics. Uh, if you're interested in checking out Suffocation, you come across this you might as well pick it up because hey it's two albums uh for the price of one when i bought it i have both of these on vinyl i acquired them both recently but happy still to have this one on cd so uh, just fantastic death metal so yeah we went from um very melodic modern contemporary hard rock to 90s brutal death metal doesn't get better than that does it uh I think all of these albums are just fantastic so if you want to check them out i can vouch for them but maybe you like them maybe you won't that's up to you thanks for watching